Today we're going to be learning Beit Sadaf Tetzai, and this is the Daf for Yom Kippur. Today's Daf is sponsored by Gita Neufeld in loving memory of our honorary Zaidi, Marvin Stoker, Mayor Ben Arye Leib Halevi Alava Shalom. Zaidi Marvin's delight in Torah learning, and particularly the Daf Yomi, still resonate. May he be a Melitz Yosher for our cherished Babi Fran and his entire family. We miss him so much. Okay, today is the daf for Yom Kippur, as I mentioned, and what's interesting about it is the way the daf starts. So we started yesterday the issue of Eruv Tavshilin, and from here the Gemara gets off and says, Tani Rav Tachlifa, because the topic really is preparing food for the Chag. Rav Tachlifa Achua de Rabbanai Chosa'a, the brother of Rabbanai Chosa'a, said, Kol mezono tav shel adam k'suvim lo meirosh hashana va'ad Yom Kippurim. How much food a person is going to have is all predetermined, okay? It gets determined when? Between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Okay, some people don't have the words Ad Yom Kippur, okay, either from Rosh Hashanah. But the idea being basically the first 10 days of the year, Aseret Yimei Tshuva, which we just went through, are all that everything becomes determined there, how much food and what kind of... What kind of uh, Parnassah you're going to have for the year. Chutzmi, except for the following things. Hotza'at Shabbatot v'hatza'ot v'hotza'at, sorry, hotza'at Shabbatot v'hotza'at Yom Tov. V'hotza'at banav l'tamut Torah. Other than the amount of money you spend on food for Shabbat and Yom Tov, and for your student, for your children to learn, okay, for all those who struggle with the high tuition costs, if you use not a lot of money, then God will reduce the amount that you get. And if you spend a lot of money on these things, then God will add to what you're supposed to get. So basically, we have this concept of how much you're supposed to get, but then there are certain adjustments that are made based on how you spend your money during the year. Some people say that this, by the way, affects mitzvot as well, not just um the following things that are listed here, but any mitzvah, right? As we're coming up on on um, the Sukkot, how much money people spend on your sukkah, or how much you spend, which kind of lulav do you buy, which kind of arba do you buy, the fancy kind, the better kind, the less good kind. And right? so they say, why are people spending a crazy amount of money on this? But what this is basically saying is, these are the things that you should be spending your money on. This is where your priorities should be, and this is where you should be spending your money. Now, we all know that some people spend a lot of money on this, and it doesn't necessarily come back to them, and that's a whole separate question. You know, but again, it relates to this is the tactics the rabbis used for encouraging people to do things that were challenging for them and difficult for them, but saying, listen, right, there's a payback. And whether it's payback in this world or in the next world is, is also, you know, this seems to stay in this world, but maybe the payback's in the next world. So in any case, this is a, um, something that you probably have heard before, familiar with. Um, anyway, let's um, keep going. So Daf Mishalahem this week dealt with this statement and, and a bunch of other things connected. Where did we get this from? How do we know it's on Rosh Hashanah that your food is determined for the year? This is from a parak in Tehillim. Blow the shofar on the day that on the Keset, well, which we'll explain in a minute, Le'yom Chagenu, to the day of our holiday, Bekeset. So what is Bekeset? Ezehu Chag Shachodesh Mitkasebo, in what holiday? It says, Tik'u Bachodesh, in the month. Which month? The month of Bekeset, Le'yom Chagenu, where the holiday is covered, meaning the moon is covered on the holiday. When is that? Rosh Hashanah, first day of the year, which is the new moon, so you can't see the moon then. So what is that? Hebe Omer, is Rosh Hashanah? So that Pasuk must be referring to Rosh Hashanah, which we know because we always quote it on Rosh Hashanah. And Uchtiv, the next Pasuk says, Because the Chok is for Yisrael. The Chok is generally the law, and Mishpat for the Elohim of Yisrael. But what we're saying is, Chok is food. And the food is Le Yisrael. The food gets determined for the Jewish people on that day. My mashma the high chok lishana de mezonehi. Who? How do we know that chok means food? Dichtiv v'achluet chukam asher natan le'em paro. We're going to have two verses. One is they ate the chukam that paro gave them. That means food. And marzut ramar mehacha atrifeni lechem chuki. Give me my portion. All right. Well, there chok really means portion, but it means portion of food. Tanya, amru alav al shamay azaken. There's another famous line. It's known about Shammai the elder, right? The ones who Beit Shammai came from. Those are the house of Shammai Asaken, his students. 
Kol Yamav, what was known about Shama himself? Kol Yamav haya ochel lechvod Shabbat. Every day he would eat in honor of Shabbat. What does that mean? Matzah behemana'a, Omer, Zola Shabbat. He would find a beautiful, a great animal. He'd say, I'm going to save that animal for Shabbat. Matzah acheret na'ehemena. He found a better one. He would say, so then he set aside the second one and he ate the first one and he would save the second one then for Shabbat. So we kept doing this, right? This is obviously, he saved the animal before he slaughtered it. Once he slaughtered it, we've already discussed without refrigeration, it would be impossible to save food for all week long. But here what we mean are the raw materials for the food. He found a good animal and said, I'm saving that animal to slaughter just before Shabbat. But Aval Hilel has a Kain Mida Acheret Haitalo. Hilel had a totally different attitude. Shakoma Asav Lashem Shamayim. Everything he did was for the sake of God. Meaning, Rashi says, what does it mean, Lashem Shamayim? Botech. Shetizemelo na El Shabbat. He had belief in God that if he found something good today and it's only Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, he'll find something better later in the week. So he would find something good, he would eat it right then. He wouldn't start putting it aside and saving it. He said, by Shabbat, I'm sure I'll find something else good. Um, Hashem Yom Yom. We've used this verse for other things, but here it means blessed is God every day, that God blesses us on a daily basis. So if He gives us something today, I'm sure He'll give us something else tomorrow. Tanya Namihach, here's another Brighter that says exactly the same thing. It's from one week to another, save your stuff from what you find till the Shabbat. Eat it that day and Trust in God that he'll give you something else for later. Amr Rabbi Chama bar Rabbi Chanina. Hanotem matana lechaveiro ein sarich lehodio. This we'll see connects back to Shabbat. If you give a friend a gift, you don't need to tell him. Okay, you can be secretive about it. That's fine. You don't need to tell your friend. Shneimal. How do we know this? Umoshe lo yada ki karan or panav. Moshe didn't know that his face was glowing. God gave him this gift that his face was going to glow, but he didn't even know. So there you see, you don't have to tell. See from God. We learn from the Midot of God. God didn't tell Moshe. Likewise, we don't have to tell other people. You can give a gift in secret. It's, it's kind of nice. They don't always need to know. Metive, but wait, it's a contradictory source. Breita says, Ladat ki Hashem This is a pasuk that talks about in the Sefer Shemot, Perak Lamed Aleph. It talks about keep Shabbat. And then it says, because it's a sign between you and me for future generations. Ladat, so they will know that I am the God that sanctified you. Ladat means to know. But if you take ladad and you change the form of the word, it also means lahodia to let others know. And that's how this drasha is going to work. Amar lo kadosh baruch hu Moshe. God said to Moshe, Moshe, matana tova yesh li bebeit genazai v'shabbat shma. I have a gift stored up in my storage house. It's called Shabbat. V'ani mevakesh li tenali Yisrael. And I want to give it to the Jewish people. Lech v'hodia otam. Go tell them. From here, Rabban Shimon ben Gabriel derived, and this is going to be the contradiction. If you give bread to a child, you have to somehow, we'll see later how you do this, you send some sort of marker on it so that the mother starts to ask, and it will become clear to the mother that you're the one who, that you gave a child a gift. Normally, you give a child a gift, the, gift, the child won't necessarily tell the parent. So you have to do something so that the parent will realize there's something to ask, right? Often you ask your kids, how was your day? What happened in school? And you get blank face, right? Nothing. Fine, nothing. Everything's fine. Nothing, no, nothing really happened. School was bad. School was good, whatever. You don't really get details. But if you know something, like the teacher writes to you, writes to the WhatsApp group of the class, you know, we did this today, then you can start asking your child about it and you'll get a better answer. So that's what we're going to see here. Now, what's the point? Why does the mother need to know? So Rashi says it's very important to know if you got a gift because... In we talk kach yedu, I'm looking at the end of the Rashi. Dibor matchel tzarich laodia et imo. Kach yedu, we talk kach yedu avivi imo sheuho avim. They'll know that that this guy likes them, loves them. V'tirbech ibav reyupi Yisrael, and it will include, it will um, perpetuate friendship and love between fellow Jews. That's a value. Where to get that value going? You have to tell people you give them gifts, and people will love you more because. Just, it's not that you give a gift so that someone loves you, but you give a gift to people you love, and then that just creates, perpetuates the relationship. So here, what do you see? We saw that it says, said, you don't need to tell them. And then here it seems to say you do. So what's the story? If the gift is going to eventually be revealed, like Moshe's face was shining, he didn't know. But eventually someone was going to tell him, and he was going to find out. 
then you don't need to say because eventually you'll figure it out and then I'll figure out where it came from. But 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 in a gift that is never going to be revealed, like Shabbat, let's say, although we're going to ask about that in a minute, or like this bread that you give a child that maybe no one will ever find out, then you have a mitzvah to tell them, or you you should tell them. Shabbat nami matanah David Galuya. What do you mean Shabbat? No one's going to know about. It. Of course, they were going to eventually know that they received Shabbat. Uh, of course, it was going to be revealed eventually. So matan schara lo avideli galuya. The fact that you get a reward for it, that was something Moshe needed to tell them because they wouldn't know that otherwise. Amar Mar. Let's go back to a statement we said before about the child. If you give bread to a child, you have to tell his mother. My avidle. So what do you do? You put some cream on the child and you put some blue um, like eyeshadow on the child. You paint his face. When he comes home with a painted face, you say, who painted your face? And then you say, oh, this guy gave me bread. And then, you know, he tells the guy's name and then the mother knows that the, right, and he also gave me some bread. Then you'll find out. But here comes a, first of all, the whole thing is just strange, right? It's, you think about kids sometimes come home from gone with their, from kindergarten with their faces painted. You know, you say, oh, what happened today? Why, why did they paint your faces? So it's like that. But now the Gemara says, But people are worried about witchcraft nowadays. And if witch, sometimes they would put, I guess, blue eyeshadow on your face or something. And that was a sign that, you know, a witch had been there. Then you get your mother all worried. We certainly don't want that. So Amara Papa, What do you do? You smear on the kid's face what he was eating. Like if he was eating the bread with cheese, then you smear cheese on the face or whatever it might be. You kind of let the food go on his face and then he'll come home with a dirty face and then the mother will ask, oh, what did you eat? And then he'll, and where did you get it from? And then she'll figure out. Everything was given to them in public, meaning everyone else knew about it. How do we know this? Shabbat was given privately to the Jewish people without anyone seeing. It says, It's between me and the Jewish people. It's a sign forever. That means it's just between us. Nobody else really knows about it. This was also in that same chapter in Shemot a few psukim later. So now the Gemara says, But then the Gentiles shouldn't get punished because they didn't keep Shabbat. And there's a Gemara that talks about that the Gentiles didn't do Shabbat. And because of that, they were they they knew about Shabbat and they decided not to keep it. And because of that, they're punished because they didn't decide to take the Torah upon themselves. So how could you explain that? Shabbat odue odinu. They really didn't know about the existence of Shabbat, but matan schara lo odinu. But they didn't know about the reward of Shabbat. Vibaitema. Some people say matan schara nami odinu. They really did know about the reward of Shabbat. Nishama yitera lo odinu. But they didn't know about this nishama yitera that you comes with Shabbat. Okay, what that is? Right, you get an extra soul on Shabbat. We'll talk about this in a minute. Um, as the Gemara says, the Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish neshama yitera noten lo kadosh baruchu ba adam erev Shabbat. You get this extra soul on Motzei Shabbat notzlin otahi menu. On Motzei Shabbat, it gets taken away from you. Shneimal Shabbat Shabbat vayi nafash. Kevan she Shabbat vay avda nefesh. And once the Shabbat is over, vayi nafash is vay nefesh. Oy ve, like I'm so sad that my extra nefesh has left me. Okay, what exactly is Neshama Yitera? You can look up different commentaries. There's a bunch of different explanations given about it. Um, but I always think of that feeling, that sinking feeling you have when Shabbat ends and you realize I'm going back to my rigmarole of my weekly routine and my work and everything else, right? Shabbat has that, it's kind of everything was removed from you on Shabbat. And then, you know, after Shabbat, you feel that, that sadness that you lost, that what, what Shabbat gave you. So, okay, we'll move on. Because it's Yom Kippur, the daf for Yom Kippur, I'm trying to go quickly to be able to have you catch up quicker. So you, now we're back to the Eruv Tavshil. So we got off on the sidetrack about the, the food that you get, right? The food you make on Shabbat and, and how it affects your income and, some, um, and about you know, how you choose which food you leave for Shabbat, Shammai Hillel. And then about giving gifts and the special gift of Shabbat and the Neshama Yitera and the, um, okay. So now, you make a Tavshil Erev Yom Tov. This is what we call Erev Tavshilim. Amar Abayi Lo Shanu Ela Tavshil of a Patlo. It has to be a cooked dish, not bread. Why not? Maishna Patlo, why not bread? By the way, we use bread and a cooked dish. What it means is it's not only bread. 
Maishna patila, why not? Maybe you need something that goes with the bread, and you don't have bread with bread. Generally, they didn't eat bread plain. They always ate bread with something. Also, porridge is not something that you eat with bread. And I'm a Rabbi Zera, honey, Baba Light Tip Shai, the Achli Nahama Banama. How do we know you don't eat it with bread? Because Rabbi Zera said, those silly Babylonians, look at their eating habits. They eat bread with bread, meaning they eat bread with porridge, and that's gross. Like who eats carbs with carbs? You eat bread with something that goes with bread, like a spread, not with porridge. But, and what, what does this have to do with anything? But I'm a Rabbi Nechlumi Bar Zacharia, Mishme da Abaye, Me'arvin, Bedaisa. Ah, it says you can use Daisa for your Eruv. Okay, that's what um, Rav Nechumi said. So because of that, it seems that it doesn't have to be something that goes with bread, because we proved porridge doesn't go with bread, and you can use porridge, so it must not be. So they say, Elamidi de lo bin, and it must be you need something that's atypical, because if it's typical, you won't be clear, it won't be clear that you're doing it for your Eruv. So you need something atypical, so that it's obvious you're using it for your Eruv. Tav Shilin. Um, and Pat Shricha, Vahad, um, Right, pot is is often used, and porridge is less common. But this whole sugya is also told in a different version, which some of it is the same and some of it is the opposite. Some people say this starts off the same. You can use a cooked dish, but not bread. My time. Oh, what's the reason? Now here it starts from the end there. If it's because you need pot is common and you need something not very common, daisa lo shricha. Daisa is not very common porridge. Here it's going to be the opposite of what he said in the first version. Ein ma'arvin daisa. You can't use it, and that's atypical, so it can't be that that's the issue. And you must need something that goes together with bread, and that's why porridge can't be used, as we know, because. Upat lomelafta vidaisa nami lomelafta, as bread doesn't, and also porridge doesn't. As we know, the Amar Rabbi Zera, Hani Bavali Tipshai de Achle Nahama Benama, because those super Babylonians who eat bread with bread. Tani Rabbi Chia, right? This is another. Um, I don't have time, but another sugya where we have people from Israel ranking on the Babylonians. Sometimes it's because of their strange eating habits, right? Which is typical. People in different places eat different kinds of foods, and they're surprised by other people who eat differently than they do. Tani Rabbi Chia. Rabbi Chia brought a bright and it said, Adashim If you have lentils that are stuck at the bottom of the pot and you scrape them up, you can rely on that for your eru. Now this means better not to, but you can if you have nothing else. But only if they have a kezayit, an olive bulk, otherwise it's not enough. Similar thing. The fat that's on your knife, you can take off the knife and eat it, right? That was what people used to eat, right? Chicken fat and things like that. So eat it as, as a dish. Right nowadays, much, much fewer people do that. But assuming you could do that, you can use it for your Eruv. Again, you have to have a requisite amount of an olive bulk. If you have little salted fish, it's not a problem. We're moving topics now, although we'll get back in a minute. A Gentile is not allowed to cook for you because we're worried that you'll end up eventually, if you eat a lot of food together, they cook for you, you'll end up potentially intermarrying. So because of that, they forbid foods that they cooked for you, however, or cooked for themselves, However, if it's food that can be eaten raw, then it's not considered cooking when they cook it for you. So, if these small fish that they would salt could be eaten raw, so therefore, if a Gentile cooks them for you, it's not a problem of Bishul Akam, you can eat it. Comes Rav Yosef and he says, Rav Yosef, if he roasted them, you can even use it for Erev Tavshilin. In other words, it's considered cooked for the purposes of Erev Tavshilin, but it's but it's not a problem, Bishul Akum. So it comes funny. You can actually use something a Gentile cooked for you as your heir of Tavshil. Plus, you can obviously eat it. But if he made Kasid Harsana, which was a fish that they would fry in, they would coat with flour and fry it, Asur. Why is it Asur? Because you don't eat flour raw, so you wouldn't eat that raw. Pshita, the Mar says, obviously, you wouldn't eat it raw. So, Mao Ikal, Kamashmalan Kimcha Ikal. 
Whenever you have something coated with flour or breadcrumbs, you don't know, are the breadcrumbs the main part or is it the, is it the, the fish, right? Let's say schnitzel. Do you make a mizonot or do you make a shakol? There actually is a debate among the commentary, the, the um, post came about this. So it depends on what you look at. Do you look at the breadcrumbs as being the ikar or the main part or the, the meat itself? So they say here that according to this sugya, the kemach is what's more important and that's the part that's raw. So therefore, it's something you wouldn't eat. Right? This reminds me of many, many years ago, some friends of mine I decided to do when I was about 20, um, a party in Aramaic, like, a, like foods of the Gemara. And we made all these random foods. We tried to make dishes that were, you know, foods that you would find in the Gemara. I don't remember if we made kasa de harsana, but it would seem the kind of thing that you would try to make at home. Amal Rabbi Abba. Eruvei tavshilin tzrichin kezayit. You have to have a kezayit of food in your Erev tavshilin. Ibai elehu. Kezayit echad lekulan. Odom a kezayit lechol echad echad. Does that mean you need a kezayit for every, one kezayit for all the people you're including in your Erev? Or do you need a kezayit for each person that you're including in your Erev Tavshilin? Tashma, let's learn from here. To Amar Rabbi Abba Amar Rav, the same person, he said in the name of Rav, Erovei Tavshilin Tzuchim Kezayit, Ben Lecha Ben Lemea. There he says it very clearly, whether it's for one person or whether it's for a hundred. Tanan. Now we're going to bring a question on Rabbi Abba, who said that you need a kezayit. Look at our Mishnah. It says, Achalo O She'avad, if you ate it or it got lost. You can't start cooking on Yantif for Shabbos if you lost your Eruv. But if a little bit was left, then you can rely on it to cook. My love Koshu. What does Koshu usually mean? It doesn't mean just any little bit is left, even if it's not an olive bulk. No, what it means Koshu here, it means as long as you have a little bit left, meaning at least a Kazai. Okay, it doesn't really prove anything about the size. Tashma, let's read from this source though. Tavshil zetzali, afilu kavu shaluku bivushal. Okay, these are all different ways, roasting, cooking, um, pickling, slow cooking, low, you know, uh, long cooking. Bekul yis ha'aspeni in shenatan alav chamim me'erev yom tov. Or even this fish, it was this fish, a Spanish fish that they would just throw boiling water on it. As long as you made that before yom tov, tchilatov asafo en lo shiur, in other words, all those types of cooking can be used, different methods, could be used to be considered a tafshil for the purposes of Erev tafshilin. As long, and it says, from the start or from whatever's left, sofo, en lo shiur, there's no requisite amount. My love, en lo shiur klal. Doesn't it sound like it means it doesn't have any requisite amount, which would go against Rabbi Abba, who says it needs to be an olive bulk, to which they answer, lo, en lo shiur lama, lava yesh lo shiur lama. It doesn't have any maximum, but it does have a minimum. Minimally, you need a kazai. It doesn't have a maximum. What does it mean? It doesn't have a maximum. What? Of course, you can make as much as you want. So some people explain what it means. It doesn't have a maximum. Is it doesn't have a maximum of how many people this can cover. Other people say it doesn't have a maximum of how much food you can cook from one eruv. In other words, one eruv either covers as many people as you want, or it also could potentially cover as many foods as you want to make on Yante for Shabbat. Amarav Huna Amarav. Next halacha. Eruvei tafshilin tzuchim da. You need knowledge, intent. What does this mean? Who? Amara um, pshita da meniach binan. Obviously, the person who makes the eruv needs an intent. If you didn't have intent, you just made some food. What? It, of course, it's not an eruv. But da nishi nicho lo beinan or lo beinan. Person, let's say I make an eruv and I have in mind a bunch of other people. Does that cover them or not? Or do they have to know? It's a bit of a strange question because normally we say in halacha zachin la adam shelo befanav. You can always do something good for someone even if he doesn't know about it. But in any case, they ask the question, but we'll see that the answer is going to be, no, they don't. Tashma, let's learn from here. Da'avua de Shmuel, Shmuel's father. Ma'arev akula nahardia. He would do it for the whole city, and not all of them necessarily knew that he was doing it for them. Rabbi Ami for Rabbi Asi, ma'arvu akulu tveria. Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi would do it for all of the Tveria inhabitants, Tiberias. Ma'arvu's Rabbi Yaakov Ba'idi, he would announce, Mi shelo inyech eruv tapshalim, yavov yismoch hashali. Anyone who didn't do it can rely on mine. So you see all these instances where they did it even though the people didn't know. Va'ad kama, how far, right? Can I make an Arab for my parents? I'm in Israel and my parents are abroad. Can I make an Arab and have intent for them? Just until the Tchum Shabbat, 2,000 cubits outside the city. So obviously, no, I can't do it for my parents. How is Samia? Now we're going to have a story, an interesting story. There was a blind person. To have a Masadur Matnite Kamete Mar Shmuel, I guess his memory was good, and he would bring Brightod in front of Shmuel. He couldn't read, but obviously he would memorize Brightod, and he brought a Brightod in front of Shmuel. 
Chazid Ava Atziv. Shmo Sam one day he was sad. Amar Le Amay Atziv. I said, What are you so sad about? Amar Le to Lo Tiv Eruv Tavshilin. I didn't do an Eruv Tavshilin. I forgot. Amar Le Smo Chadidi. He said, No problem. Just rely on mine. Okay, sounds like a pretty simple story, but the story gets a little more complicated. Lishana the next year, Chazid Ava Atziv. He gets into a similar situation. He sees the guy very sad. Amarle, Amayatsiva. He says, What are you so sad? Amarle, Delo Tive, Ruf Tafshilin, Erve Tafshilin. I forgot to make an Erve Tafshilin. Amarle, Posheat. His reaction now, the second time, he says, Wow, you're a bad guy. Okay, you're negligent. Right? You didn't do it twice, and it's one time. Okay, but twice? Lekule Amashale, Ledidach Asr. Everyone else is allowed to do this. For you, it's forbidden. That's everyone else can rely on my Eruv, but I'm not including you. You were not included in my Eruv because you were negligent. Okay. First of all, it's a little bit strange. He included him, everyone in the Eruv when he originally did it. So how could he disinclude him at this point? Some people say it's not really halachic. He was trying to be punitive about it. Right? He was upset with him. Some people say that maybe he, by the fact that he didn't say, oh, can I rely, right? what should he have said? Can I rely on your Eruv again? Because I forgot. Shouldn't have been sad. The fact that he was sad maybe indicates he didn't want to rely on Shmuel's Eruv. And then it's not like having no intent, it's like having negative intent, right, where he didn't want to. And that's why Shmuel is maybe saying, you can't fulfill your obligation with mine. Anyway, there's different ways to understand this. Next. Tanu Rabbanan. Yom Tov Shechal Erev Shabbat. Last topic for today. If Yom Tov falls out on Erev Shabbat, Ein Ma'arvin Lo Eruvei Tchumim Velo Eruvei Chatserot. You can't, let's say you forgot to make an Erev Chatserot or an Erev Tchumen for Shabbat or Erev Tchumen you would also need for Yantif. You didn't do it. Can you do it on Yantif for Shabbat? So Tanakhama says no, neither one. It doesn't talk about Erev Tavshilin, but presumably it would be the same as Erev Chatserot. We'll see why in a minute. Rebbe Omer, Ma'avin Eruvei Chatserot, Aval Lo Eruvei Tchumen. You can do an Erev Chatserot to allow carrying on Shabbos, but you can't do an Erev Tchumen to allow you to walk more than 2,000 cubits outside the city. Why? You can do something on Yantif to permit something that's permitted today. You're allowed to carry on Yantif. Likewise, you're allowed to cook on Yantif. So to do something that's permitted, you can do. But you can't make an Erev Tchumen because you're not allowed to walk outside the Tchumen Yantif either. So you can't do that on Yom Tov. Um, the question is, why does Tanakama think it's forbidden? So the question is, so there's a few different explanations given in the commentaries. One is to say that it's a hachana problem. You're preparing from Yom Tov to Shabbat, which we've learned already. You're not allowed to prepare something on Yom Tov for Shabbat, even if you could do it on Yom Tov. Right? That's the whole reason why we need Erev Tchumen, because you can't, uh, an Erev Tov Shilling, because you can't cook, even though you're allowed to cook on Yom Tov. You can't cook on Yom Tov for Shabbat, because it's preparation. Only the Erev allows you to do that. Second option is, you're, it's like you're fixing something, just like you can't take Truman and Maslow, because it's, it's fixing, also here you, you're like fixing. And the third is that an Erev Chatserot is, a tra you're basically transferring ownership. You're saying we're all co-owners. That you can't do on Yante if you're not allowed to transfer ownership. So there's possibly other halachic issues involved here. But Rebbe seems to think it's okay to do the Erev Chatserot, and presumably he would say the Erev Tavshilin, even though it doesn't say it. So now the question is, how do we hold? Itma. Rav Amar Halacha Ketanakama, U Shmuel Amar Halacha Kerebi, right? So Rav is strict and Shmuel is lenient. So the Gemara says, Ibaya Lehu, Halacha Kerebi, when Shmuel says Halacha Kerebi, Lekula or Lechumra, is he being lenient or strict? That's a strange question. Rebbe was clearly lenient. He said you can make an Erev Chatzera of Anyantif for Shabbat. So Pshita de Lekula Ka'amar. So they say, right, obviously he's being lenient. So why are you even asking? They say, well, Mishum Dushalach Rabbi Elazar Lagola. Rabbi Elazar sent it Bavel. Lok Shatem Shonim Be Bavel. Rabbi Matir Vachamim Mosrim. You guys in Bavel think that Rabbi was the one who allowed it, and and Chachamim did not. No, you have it all wrong. El Rabbi Oser Vachamim Mosrim. Rabbi forbids, and the rabbis permit. So now the question is, when Shmuel said it, which version was he holding by? The version that Rabbi's strict or lenient? So my, what's the situation? Tashma, let's learn from here. Rav Tachlifa bar of Dini, Avid Uvda Kavate de Shmuel. Rav Tachlifa did something like Shmuel. And Amarav, and others again, we don't know what Shmuel said, but he did whatever Shmuel said, either like Rebbe, Lekula, lenient, yes, you can make an Erev, or no, you can't. But Amarav, and Rav's reaction to that was, Tchilat Hora'a, the Haid Sorva Merabana Lekukula. The first psak that this rabbi gave is going to mess, is, is just going to mess people up. Now, what does it mean to mess people up? 
So, Iyamar Pishlama Lekula Ka'amar Hainu Kilkula. Remember, Rav, Paskin like the rabbis. So, if you want to say that he said, oh, he allowed people to do an Erev Chatserot, and Rav says you're not allowed to. So, that would make sense then. He's saying that was your mess up. You're permitting people to do things that's actually forbidden. Ela Iyamar Lechumra. But if Rebbe is more strict, that he doesn't allow you to make an Erev Chatserot, my Kilkula Ika, what kind of mess up could that cause people to do, right? He's just being more strict, or strict is always better. Well, maybe not. So now the Gemara says, no, not, not necessarily. To not permit people to do an Erev Chatserot is going to cause a Kilkula on Shabbat, because then all these people are going to carry even though they don't have an air of Chatzerot. So sometimes being machmir and not allowing things is actually causing more people to mess up. And therefore, he says, and we've seen this before, right, where chumrah da'ati de kula, right, that a chumrah is going to cause people actually to mess things up. So, right, which we know to be the case. Um, and therefore, it's possible. We don't have a good indication here what actually Shmuel thought that Rebbe held when he passed in like him. So Amarava, here's the bottom line of the sugya. We'll just finish with this. Amarava, Amarav Chista, Amarav Huna, Halacha Kerebi Uli Isur. We actually pass on like Rebbe and the Chumra way. He specifically, Rebbe was the one who said, you can't do an Erev Chatserot on Yantif the Falls on Erev Shabbat. With that, we finish for today. Gemar Chatimah Tovah, everyone. Shana Tovah. And we'll pick up after Yom Kippur.